This is footage of the Brazilian Amazon, on fire. As of August 20th, 2019, there have been more than 74,000 fires in this region. And that's not normal. In fact, according to Brazil's National Institute for Space Research, it's already the largest number of fires on record for a single year. So what makes this year so different? And what happens if the fires continue to burn? First of all, not only is there an unprecedented number of fires, but there's also a massive amount of smoke in the air, so massive that it's visible from space. Scientists estimate that it stretches 1.2 million square miles across Brazil, and it even briefly eclipsed the sun above Brazil's largest city, Sao Paulo. So how did we get here? The simple answer is people. Scientists say that humans ignited as much as 99% of these fires, largely to clear land for agriculture. But that alone isn't actually unusual. There are normally fires in the dry season from July to October, which is when ranchers and farmers are more likely to burn. Where it gets complicated is when you try to look at why this year is so much worse. Environmental groups say it's largely because of one man, Jair Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil. The government of Jair Bolsonaro has sent a signal, both in terms of its policies and in terms of its rhetoric, that illegal activity, arson, deforestation, land invasions, violence will be tolerated. That's Christian Poirier of the nonprofit Amazon Watch. And he says these fires were started by ranchers, land grabbers, and a range of other actors who were emboldened by Bolsonaro's rhetoric. According to Poirier, they're setting fire to portions of the rainforest to acquire more land, more property. Because now, there's no risk of getting caught. But it actually gets worse. According to CNN, Bolsonaro has also slashed the budget of the country's environmental enforcement agency by as much as $23 million. If we look at these moves, we see the, the table was set for the kind of the devastation we're seeing today. Bolsonaro himself has offered up an alternative explanation for the fires. He suggested that non-governmental organizations, NGOs, ignited them as a way to embarrass his administration, though he presented no proof. But here's the thing, regardless of how they started, these fires are really bad, and not just for the million or so indigenous people who live in the Amazon. For one, these fires are releasing loads of harmful gases into the air, like carbon monoxide, which maps like this show is spreading in the region. And they also drive up deforestation, adding to what has already been a really bad year for the Amazon. And this is where things get even scarier. You see, deforestation in the Amazon triggers a negative feedback loop. The more trees that fall, the drier the Amazon becomes. And a dry Amazon is more likely to burn. Now, scientists warn that we may soon reach a point where that cycle is irreversible. What we're talking about is reaching a, a tipping point in the Amazon today. Um, where enough of the forest has been either destroyed or degraded, and it can no longer create its own environment, its own rainfall. And that could trigger what scientists call a dieback. So the moment you cross that, that threshold, that tipping point, uh, you're moving into a place where the Amazon will turn into a savanna. That's right. He says that the Amazon would become a totally different environment, far from the one we know today, which is home to three million species of plants and animals, which sucks up as much as 600 million tons of carbon each year, and which supplies as much as 20% of the oxygen that we breathe. 